Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, welcome to Good Ale Games and welcome to the board game edition of Would You Rather, where I ask the question, would I buy, borrow or bin three games from my board game collection? <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone, this is episode 3 of Would You Rather, where I'm asking myself a difficult question about board games I, I clearly love because I already own them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose three games from my collection at random using the BG Stats app, then I'm going to go grab them, tell you a little bit about them, and then decide which category each one belongs to. And of course I want you to play along at home as well. So let's start, what's the first game? Hit the right button. Discovery, the era of voyage. Let's get another. Altiplano. And Bullet Heart. Right, let's go get the games and then I'll tell you my thoughts. So first out of the app is Discovery, the era of voyage. And this is from Emperor S4 Games and was on the top shelf for me to go and retrieve. Um, and there's a reason it's on the tippy top shelf. Um, and the reason being is that I have a collection of Emperor S4 titles because um, for a while there, they were definitely my favourite publisher. They have a tendency to make kind of very unique games in very small packages. And I was a really, really big fan. And I have in fact reviewed this game quite a while ago now, actually, if you want to go and check it out. I probably should check it out, but see, I'm doing this, you know, real time. I haven't looked anything up or tried to remember. Um, and I've not played this in ages. But what I can tell you about it, it is a trading in the Mediterranean style game where you are gathering things to exchange at different kind of, I want to say ports. Because what you do is there are, this game is made entirely kind of cards and cubes and the cards go in a circle I think it is, I hope it's a circle, or laid out in such a way that the different ports and then you move to wherever it is you're trying to go to to exchange in things to get things to do that at a further port again. Um, it's really tiny to play and pretty quick as well like if you enjoy big euro games but want them in a much smaller and easier to play package I don't think you could beat this because um, it really does have that euro game feel without kind of all of the <gasps> big bloat big learning you know that kind of thing with a little bit of strategy built into it as well. Um, the reason I've not been playing it is because I kind of enjoy the bloat of the big euro game and um, while I find it fascinating to be able to fit um, like big ideas into small packages like this or, or you know um, kind of more not quite introductory but definitely like accessible gaming um, I think find it's something that I don't necessarily play myself even though I'm kind of enamored by it which is why I have a whole number of Empress S4 games that I've not got rid of they sit on the upper shelf together um, because I think they're cool even though I'm not playing them so yeah, so that's, so that's that. If you want a more in-depth review, um, you can dig out my one. I assume other people maybe have reviewed it as well. Um, so that is the dis uh, era, Discovery the Era of Voyage. It's because it's written the other way around in the box. I forever get confused. So personally, I find it really interesting that the app has chosen both the Era Discovery of Voyage and um, Altiplano together because I feel like they are really similar games. Um, Altiplano, however, comes on much much of a bigger scale but has very similar concepts into it. Um, it's been a little while since I've played Altiplano um, and the reason for this is that it can take quite a while to play it and to finish it. Now I've heard rumours that the expansion speed the game, speeds the game up a bit so I'm keeping my eyes peeled for that because I really do quite enjoy um, Altiplano. But what I, from what I remember about it again, and it's going to sound like the previous title, which is that there are places on the board that you need to go, but you can only go to them in particular orders um, to gather stuff to hand in at other places, to get things to hand in at other places. Um, so it's definitely kind of a, a trading game like that. It's got more to it than that, if I could um, remember it better right now. But that, that, is, that is my impression of the game. I know there are little carts for keeping your stuff in. Um, it's kind of colourful and bright and, and fun, you know what I mean? And I liked it a lot when we played it. 
Um, maybe it's just at two that it takes a while to play, but um, it's nice to know that there is an option out there that might kind of speed it up, because I remember it dragging, you know, towards the end. But yeah, it's a, it's a game of gathering things to hand them in. Um, is the theme, is there more theme really than that? I, I guess. Um, not, not a ton. I don't feel like I'm describing the game very well here. Um, and that says something, I guess, about this game, doesn't it, that I own, that, um, that I've kept, that um, clearly I don't play all that often. But um, I do have a fondness for it. So hmm, we'll, see, we'll see what that means. But yeah, so it's, yeah, and your Euro gamey goodness. <laughs> um, you know, just different resources than most to kind of fit into the theme. All right, so then the last one I probably can talk the most about because I played it at the weekend, and this is Bullet Heart. Um, right, so do any of you remember playing um, Puzzle Bobble or maybe Poyo Pop Fever or any of those Match 3 gem games? Well, then you're, you're in for some fun because that is what this game is about. Um, how it works is that, you know, you are <laughs> basically being shot at with bullets and you're trying to kind of mitigate the, the damage so that you, you don't die. And what happens is, is that you have a grid and each row is a different color and you're going to be pulling these bullets that are shot at you out of a bag and they will have a color and a number. And that's how far down they're going to go on the matching color on the grid. And if they hit the bottom, you get shot. So it's up to you to match patterns to clear your bullets kind of from your grid. Um, and the cool thing is those bullets you clear, they, you send them to your opponent. So that next turn they have extra bullets to deal with coming from their bag. Um, that's the, the concept. What makes this game special isn't its familiarity to, you know, kind of arcade style games, um, but it's the different characters you play as and they force you to play very differently. Um, each one is unique and does something completely different in how they deal with um, the bullets and things like that. And they're very, very cool and very, very fun. Um, I've always liked this and I find when you show it to other people, they instantly kind of get the idea behind it because we've played games like this before. Um, you can play it with a three minute timer. It comes with a soundtrack that's terrifying and amazing all at the same time. Maybe some people are really competitive like that. You can play a co-op and fight bosses as a team, which is kind of cool as well. And the solo mode is to be noted because I've actually tried it. Um, <laughs> um, I don't normally play anything solo, but this one's quite nice solo, so I can definitely give that a big thumbs up. Um, yeah, All Round Bullet Heart, I think is a pretty great game. I do wish I played it more often, but it has its own kind of stref stress level to it. You know, like when you play a dexterity game, you're like, oh God, is it going to fall? Will I make it? It's got a bit of that going on. So it's kind of like <gasps> at the end of each round, but also kind of in a fun way as well. So if you like to be a little bit on edge, um, I can definitely recommend Bullet Heart. Yes. <laughs> right. So this is where it gets interesting. Because now I have to like make decisions and I think I've won, kind of have one already made. Yeah, would I? Oh, okay. Start thinking about what you would do. I'm going to give you three seconds. Which would you buy, bin or borrow? I think I keep changing the order of these. I think bin was supposed to be last, but you, you get where I'm going with this. So, okay. The one that I would buy. Oh my God, that's really harsh. Um... What should I buy? I'm thinking about buy in terms of not ones I would just want to play, but ones at the game I would want to show my friends most. And I think that has to be Bullet Heart. Yeah, I think, yeah, I would buy Bullet Heart. Yeah, I would. I would buy it. Um, which means I would borrow. So, you know, this is the game I would like to play occasionally, but not necessarily own. Altiplano. I, I feel a bit bad about that because Alta Plano is one I, I like having on my shelf to play. But I'm after realising I probably don't play it as well as I, as often as I thought I did or that I don't know it as well as I should. Like that's a bit embarrassing on my part. So yeah, so we'll go with Borrow for Alta Plano and then we'll go, sorry, Bin, with Discovery, the era of Voyage. I have to keep reading it off the box. Um, just not because it's a bad game, but just because it doesn't fit with the type of games I play, I guess, anymore. Um, I could see it being really popular with a lot of people, especially if you traveled a lot or you went camping and you wanted a, a full, like, Euro game feel in a tiny box. Like, it's got it going for it. 
um, but I just I don't see me pulling it down I kind of I'm keeping it more I guess for nostalgia or set value I think than everything else so yeah so there we have it that's what it is I I'm buying bullet I am borrowing Altiplano and I'm binning discovery the era of voyage oh, oh these, these are really depressing videos because I own all of these games already. I like them, but you know, all of them are good in their own way. Um, it's hard putting them up against each other like this, but that's what it is. So tell me what you would have picked. Did I choose wisely? Um, yeah, and let's hear all about it. So that is the end of episode three. If you liked this or thought it was fun, please give us a thumb up, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, the usual yada, yada, yada. Um, and until next time, come back for some, hopefully, you know, more fun videos and some reviews and stuff as usual. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.